Hello. So good to see you. So good to be blinded by the spotlight so that I can't see you. It's beautiful. You look much more attractive that way. Um, no, 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 not because it's because you're radiant or something. I don't know. Um, when I think about what we're about to do, I get so excited because um, when I was 17 years old, now you, a little backstory about me. I was an uber Catholic nerd. I, it took a big struggle for me to become Catholic and really enter into my faith. But when I was 17 years old, I was very um, formal about my faith because I didn't know Christ. I knew a lot about Christ. And this is the way I, I like to tell people. So um, before I met my now wife, right, uh, let's say that there was some creepy dude from the NSA who walked up with like a, the National Security Agency, and walked up with a big like file on this woman named Shannon and gave me the file and I had to read it and go through it and I memorized a bunch of facts and figures. Now that's, that's one thing, but let's fast forward a semester when I actually met her, okay? These are the two orders of knowledge that I just want to draw our attention to. You can know a lot about someone and not really know them. But no, knowledge about is still important, but it's like the second order. What you want is that direct, unmediated experience, just that direct communication, firsthand experience. Or a better word that we can kind of use for this is encounter. You want to encounter. And the same is true in our relationship with God. For so many of us, we don't know God, we just know about God. We go, and maybe, maybe you go to Catholic school, and God is actually a subject in your classes. I call it the Napoleon complex, right? Or not the Napoleon complex, that's a thing. No, the, the Napoleon, God is Napoleon syndrome. And what I mean by that is like, yeah, he's a guy that I got to learn about and memorize some stuff about. And, and, you know, he's an important figure for Western civilization or something like that. But at the end of the day, you close the book, you close out God. He's like a, a subject, an abstraction. And for many of you in public school, God is kind of like Santa Claus, right? He's that myth your parents tell you about to keep you on the nice list and not go on the naughty list, or else you're going to burn for all eternity, and you don't want to do that. Um, <clears throat> but for, for all of us, if we have these experiences of who God is, that means that he is something uh, outside of us. He's not, he's not with us. I don't have a relationship with God. And so what we need to do, what we constantly need to do is have what Pope Benedict called the encounter with Christ, an encounter with the living God. Now we don't do that encounter through the music, through the exciting talks. Okay, the music and the exciting talks are meant to kind of lay the groundwork for you to pray and enter in more deeply. So tonight what we are going to do, these wonderful people are busy building up the altar area so that we can have adoration. Now, uh, let's give us a, a round of applause. How many of y'all have ever been to an adoration? Okay. All right, so none of you. Um, so, uh, so what adoration is, when I heard these words, I was in uh, Cologne, Germany, and Pope Benedict, now Pope Emeritus Benedict, was saying these things. He said, the word in Greek that would eventually become the Latin word ad oratio or adoration, the word in Greek means submission. And he said, it's fascinating how this word works itself out. Because when you encounter God, like he's God and you're not. This is Gomer's first spiritual principle, God is God and I am not, which is a wonderful truth because I would be a terrible God. Well, for me, I'd be an awesome God, but for y'all, it would just be awful. So, um, so God is God and I am not. What does that mean? That means that he is so other when compared to me. He is love itself. I might love. He, he is justice. I might sometimes be just. And it's such a radically different experience that there's this massive gap between me and God. So what do I do? Well, if I encounter holiness itself, I submit. I throw myself down on the ground and I just beg God, like, thank you for letting me be in your presence, but I don't deserve to be here. And then he said this, Pope said, and it's interesting how it goes from that word into adoration. Ora, the word ora meaning with the mouth. Actually, the term adoration means a kiss of the mouth. 
And you start to hear this and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I understand the submitting to the all-powerful, all-wise, all-just God. But how does it go from there to there? And he says that the even more important thing is to note how our adoration of Christ from the Latin rite to the, to the altar, he says, points us always to communion with Christ. Right? The Eucharist from Mass is preserved for adoration so that you might not feel apart from God, but that you might have intimacy with him. That you might have the intimacy that the word ad oratio, I mean, just what, what, it, what is it talking about? It's talking about you having this living encounter with God. Now, I want to run through some pro tips on how to do adoration. So what we are going to do is the Eucharist is going to process down. Mr. Ben Walther is going to lead us in some music. And it is proper for you uh, to kneel in the presence of our Eucharistic king. Now, here's the deal. We're in a weird setup here, right? This isn't a church with fancy kneelers. Uh, do not feel guilty if you cannot kneel, okay? Don't feel, like, we do these weird guilt trips to ourselves. You don't need to do it. One time there was an order of nuns, and they wrote to St. Francis de Sales, and they said, uh, and this one nun said, while um, kneeling for a long time uh, causes my knees to hurt, but, um, and it distracts me from prayer, but I feel like I should suffer for Christ. And do you know what he said in response? He says, if it, ner if it hurts, stop kneeling. I mean, it's just, but people are like, oh, no, woe is me. I must do penance. It's like, yeah, but you can't even pray anymore. All you're doing is like, oh, my knees, they hurt, right? So stop doing that to yourself. Stop it. Okay, you don't need to be a superhero tonight. Let Jesus be the superhero tonight. Can we do that? Can we do that? Okay. It always comes back to superheroes, Ben. <sighs> so, adoration. Adoration is a time when the priest takes a consecrated host, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, our Lord, places it within the monstrance, reposes the monstrance right here on this holy altar, this sacred space, so that you can look at Christ and let Christ look at you. Don't read Right? Maybe you brought a book. Don't do that. Just pray. Just look at him and say, Lord, like if you went to my men's sessions, right? Lord, what is my idol? What is the thing I'm worshiping in place of you? What is the relationship that I have that's out of whack? What do I need to give you? If you're about to go to confession, if you want to go to confession, Lord Jesus, show me my heart and how I'm not like you so that I can give that away and be more like you. Make adoration productive and right at the point, it's probably going to happen about 35 minutes into it, when the music won't be enough, right, when all the like group praying won't be enough and you'll start to get restless. That's where you stop everything and you say, Jesus, this is getting boring. Right, because it's only natural, right? Jesus, this is getting boring. But I get to be in your presence. The creator God of the entire universe has willed it for me to be here. All you need to do, people, is surrender to this moment. To him. And just let him look at you. Let your lover's gaze be upon you. Let him find you lovely. I'm going to end on this note. When I was uh, 17 years old, I encountered the living God, Jesus Christ, in the Eucharist. <clears throat> I was at a gym uh, in Denver, Colorado. I was on a retreat. It was uh, kind of a crazy retreat. And I sat at the foot of the, um, of the altar, and I just opened up the Bible to the book called The Song of Songs. And if you don't know what The Song of Songs are, it's like love poetry in the middle of the Bible, and it's extraordinarily intimate. And it's funny, because I mean, some of it's like archaic language that today we would laugh at because we just don't get it, right? It's like, your lips are like a scarlet strand. And you're like, okay, thank you, right? But then it's like, your cheeks are like halves of a pomegranate. And you're like, you see, I got chipmunk cheeks, right? And then and it's like, your hair is like a flock of goats streaming down Mount Gilead. And you're like, brother, I'm going to cut you, right? Oh, no, they love it. Okay. Okay, well, well, I got plenty more where that came from. All right, girl, your teeth. Right? Have you ever complimented guys a girl's teeth in order to woo them? Your teeth are like pregnant lambs that have just come up from the washing. You know, you're like, all right, I'll take it. Now, why is this important? Why is this important? 
Because in my life when I was 17 years old, I was struggling with some big things. Most of all, my absent dad, some dark addictions, and a loathing self-hatred. Hated myself. And I projected to everyone else around me that because I knew a lot about Jesus, that meant I knew Jesus, and I didn't. And I thought Jesus was a judge. I thought Jesus was going to do nothing but be disgusted with me. And I opened up the Song of Songs, and I read chapter 2, verses 8 through 17. Hark, my lover, here he comes, springing over the hills, leaping over the mountains. My lover is like a gazelle or a young stag. Behold, he stands behind our walls, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. My lover speaks, he says to me, arise, my beloved, my beautiful one, and come away. For see, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone. And it was at that moment that I knew that God loved me. It was at that moment. There was nothing else. There was, no, there was no loud noises. There was no me weeping and rending my garments and dumping ashes on my head. There was nothing but a boy sitting down before his God. And his God stooped really low and said, you see that? I've come for you. And you've been running from me for so long. And you had no idea you were right here in the palm of my hand. I never left you. You're looking up and you're looking around. You're like, where are you? I'm right here. I never left. And so it is my hope and prayer that this year of mercy, that this conference, that this night can be a night where you stop running and just surrender to a kiss from your Lord in adoration. And I hope tonight actually prepares you for something even greater. I hope it prepares you for reception of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist tomorrow at Mass so that you can culminate the look of the lover with communion with your divine lover. Amen? Okay, so this is how we do. This is how we do. There are certain points where we do the group praying. It's, prop, it's appropriate to fall down on your knees. If you want to stand in prayer, do not kill yourselves here, people. If you want to sit, you want to stand, whatever helps you pray more. Don't distract people around you, okay? Don't do any of that stuff. Just let the praise and worship of God surround your heart tonight. Don't let anything else distract you. Don't let anything else distract you. So let's begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, your name spoken is like a spreading perfume. And so we cry out, draw me to you. We cry out with the words of the Song of Songs, Lord, we are hiding from you. But when you look at us, you see us as lovely. We don't see ourselves in any way like that. Some of us have adorned ourselves with garments of violence and pride. Others have adorned themselves with shame and depression and despair. Lord Jesus, show us what you think of us. Show us your face, Lord Jesus. Set us free from the lies. Set us free from the labels. And let us simply be here with you tonight, adoring you, worshiping you, loving you laying down our idols and picking up our crosses that have been made for this very hour to give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray.